Well, hello, and thanks for popping by. Um, first of all, apologies for the noise. Uh, not the birds and everything. I love those. Never apologize for them. But uh, the soy that we live on, soy is Thai for a small road, um, is normally incredibly quiet. But the soy, oh, next soy over to us, uh, they're rebuilding the road. Um, so our soy here is being used as a shortcut by those who live at the top end of both uh, soy three and soy four. Uh, and also it's the route for the big lorries that come with all the cement and diggers and God knows what. So apologies for that noise. Um, yeah, I, I was just finishing off. Uh, this is about 80% done. I was just finishing off replanting this particular setup for a friend. And uh, I realized I should have videoed it because it's unusual. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I, that's what, I must apologize for Tommy as well, our Sunset Konya uh, parrot. Uh, they, they are well known as the noisiest Konyas in the world. Uh, and he, he always thinks, if there's nobody else here, he thinks I'm talking to him, so he might well squawk that. He's looking at me through the windows. Right, yes, the, the main reason that this uh, is a bit unusual um, have I already mentioned about the pot? I can't remember. Yeah, the, the pot, it's not your normal bonsai pot. But the main thing is that these are not technically trees. They're called aurelia, and um, they're actually more of a succulent than a tree. But that brings out some pretty good reasons to have them in your setup, because they don't need a lot of light, uh, and they are very forgiving. Uh, as far as watering is concerned. Obviously, if you leave it too dry for too long, they're going to die like anything else, but um, uh, they can tolerate uh, much more than most other trees can, in inverted commas. <laughs> um, and I love them. They're, they actually grow wild here. I've, I've got some of these out the front of the house that are almost two meters tall, really bushy. Um, and there's a few variations. This is the black Aurelia, but there are also, I think this one's called a five leaf Aurelia. I'm not quite sure. Um, but look them up, Google them, see if you can get your hands on them, because normally they're incredibly cheap. Um, and that means that your commitment when you're learning to make bonsais or whatever is a lot lower financial wise. You don't have to worry too much. Uh, that your expensive tree that you've just bought to practice on um, ends up dying. Uh, but they're also they're great fun and they're so easy to look after. So rather than finish this one off, which I will do later on this video, uh, I'm going to put her to one side because I'm going to make another setup, not with a bridge pot, for forests, planting up forests, normally, I mean, if you want to be a bonsai purist, normally they're conifers, and there are specific numbers of trees, um, you know, that, that have to follow the bonsai code. Um, and it, it's rare that you see a deciduous forest, but they do exist, they do exist, and, and they can look really nice. Um, you, the kind of pots you need for a forest are, are obviously different. Um, they can they can simply be a lot bigger normal bonsai pot, or they can be weird shapes and all kinds of things. Um, this this shape is obviously quite narrow. It's only about four inches or so in depth, um, but it gives enough depth to be able to plant the trees, at, you know, forward a little bit and back a little bit. So that gives the whole thing depth. And like I say, this is about eighty percent finished. Um, it still needs quite a bit of work on the tops to turn them into proper trees. Uh, but I've got a lot more, so let me look for a pot that you could. Got some overly pots here. They're not really appropriate. But you could use something like this. That would be a nice little forest setup, although you'd need fairly small trees. So they will be show in size, about eight inches, nine inches or whatever. Um, th these are serving pots that I bought at a, a ceramic shop. 
sells plates and cups and things for hotels and stuff. And uh, I drill the holes uh, that, that are needed. This is another serving dish, but again, you know, you could make a very nice planted forest with that. You've got lots of room for maybe, oh, 12, 15 trees and, you know, maybe a little lake if you're into that kind of thing. I'm not particularly, but as normal people um, that don't want to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on beautiful bonsai trees, um, because we would spend most of our lives worrying like crazy that it was going to die. Um, it's a hobby for something to play with and keep your mind active and uh, for almost meditation in some ways. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you end up with something that you like. You know, you're not going to put it in a bonsai show. If you are, you're on the wrong channel. Uh, I'm not that good. There are other channels that, that um, can guide you a lot better than I can on proper bonsai. But um, I think what I'm going to do actually is use, because I've got a fair few trees here, I'm going to use another one of my concrete pots here, um, which is a nice shape, gives a bit of room to play around a bit. So um, I'll prepare this pot and then we'll whip out all the trees and uh, have a look to see what we've got and pick those that we want to use. So. So, uh, we've got our stuff in the bottom to help drainage and those little wire clip things hold it in place. Uh, right, let's put her to one side and let's see what we've got. One of the great things about Aurelias, um, this is, like I say, a black Aurelia and I think it's called five, five leaf Aurelia. Um, Similar but different, so nice to have a bit of contrast in your forest. And uh, this cost me uh, about that just over a dollar uh, a pound sterling, and uh, just over a dollar. And the thing is, you get more than one tree, so it's perfect for us for our forests, and with a little bit of teasing. Sometimes it's a good idea to give them a good soak beforehand, which I should have done. And gently, he says, bashing it on the table, <laughs> separating the trees. They could be separated, but we'll keep them together. And we'll keep them together as well. That looks like a nice bunch and it's got a little, it's got a new one growing up. So you end up with loads of them, which is great. So 
Um, let's have a look. You will get some weird ones. I've picked these. Some of these I dug up from the front of our house. Some of them I bought in the garden center. Uh, like these I bought the other day. Um, the ones I dig up, they can be a little bit weird. <laughs> but still very usable, you know, if there's like this big one isn't really much use. But if we take it out of the picture, uh, you can see that what's left, if I take it down to there. And what's left is quite usable. And if I want it to be even more ruthless, there we go. I could get rid of them. And I've got this little lot standing up here. Um, but there'll always be something that you can use in a forest uh, to give it a bit of character. Now, this one, this is quite a big grouping. Lots of different ones. Um, I think there's maybe five or six trees in there. Um, that could be like a central sort of feature uh, of the forest. Okay, so let's get some soil in first. Um, I've the soil. It's not really soil, is it? The medium I'm, I'm using is about 20-25% soil because these are succulents, and um, but not quite. You know, like cactus can be in sand type thing or just pebbles, but they're not. Uh, they do well in a reasonable soil mix, but well draining. So I've got all kinds. There's acadama in here, uh, poppers of all kinds of sizes. Uh, very small gravel, volcanic rock, um, and other bits and pieces, basically just to, to keep this very free draining. Um, but the soil will hold enough water so that not the, the water doesn't just run straight through. It's, it's held by some of the organic stuff, the soil, and it also helps with the feeding. Uh, they need feeding more than a cactus does. So that's what I mean. They're sort of in between succulent and woody trees. They never get wood. Poor trees. I suppose that will only make sense to Americans these days. So, so right, let's get some soil in here. It's not waffling. I come from the northeast of England. And we have something in common with our Irish cousins, both Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, in that we have an extra gene. And this extra gene that we have is just for talking. As they say in Sunland, talk hind legs off a donkey. Right, let's get this one in first. Now, <clears throat> the rule of thirds that people use in photo, photographers use and videographers uh, is exactly the same when you're setting up your forest. The rule of thirds is divide your picture into thirds and put a feature of that picture or of that scene on the cross where those thirds meet. You've got a few choices. Um, but if you place something on those on the thirds, visually it, it makes your brain work a bit harder and it makes it more pleasant to look at and more natural. I don't know. Um, you see what I mean? So rather than just sticking something like this in the middle of the pot, we're going to put it to one side. Normally, in the West, we go from left to right. Um, going from right to left, it, it can work, but you might need something on the other side to balance it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just more natural to go from left to right. Mind you, if you wanted it on the right, simply turn the pot around if you've managed to make something that's got two faces. Right, so, okay, let's use that as our, our main feature. And um, we'll have a couple of little green ones, I think. A, a lot of the foliage will actually be cut off these at the end, which you'll see. Uh, and that makes a huge difference visually um, it, it makes them look more tree-like uh, because remember old trees you don't 
you, you tend to see a lot more trunk in old trees than you do in younger trees. So all this kind of stuff, you know, might need to be moved out. Just looking for something that might fit nicely in here because it's towards the end. So we'll get it going down. And I think that looks quite nice. So we'll just hold that in there for now. And something to bear in mind, actually, when you're doing this, because we're not actually wiring in any of these trees, uh, they're having to stand up on their own, as it were. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more delicate to move around and, until they get established, until their roots actually get established. Um, I, I play, literally. This is all I do. I play. Uh, and if something looks right, I'll stick it there. Like that. And I so say, because they're so forgiving, um, you can mess them around a little bit, you know, if, if later on you need to pull one out and put something else in or move it around. I say they're very forgiving. Uh, I do like them. I think we need one down here, but we need a small one, don't we? So, let's look. Oh, I'll get one here. Hmm, needs a bit more than that, I think. That would work. That would work. Let's see what else we've got. Hmm, I think actually this works better at the back. And then this one on the front. Where is it? Oh, yes, yes, I like that. Um, the organic stuff I have in this mix uh, is, I don't know, it's maybe about the, the sort of 25% of the, the soil mix, the organic mix. Uh, about half of that is leaf litter, uh, which has obviously been dried and powdered and things. Um, and the rest is ordinary uh, garden soil that you would buy from your garden center. Okay, so, now then, something you've got to bear in mind if you want to put rocks in your setup, which I always do, is you've got to leave enough room for them. Um, I've, oh, I don't know if you can't really see, can you? Down there, I'll show you all, I have hundreds of rocks down here to my right hand side. I think choosing the right rocks is almost as important as choosing the pot. So I do spend a bit of time on that. But there we go, all right, that's a good start. And let's see, to contrast that green, we'll put one of these behind, I think. Um, I have to say, I love, I don't know whether you're picking up my voices of my neighbors next door. I love my next door neighbor. Uh, like most Thais, um, she talks too loud, much louder than most Westerners would in a domestic situation. <laughs> it's like everybody's half deaf, but that's fairly common out here. Um, even more so if they're on the telephone. It's like they don't believe the mic can pick up everything. Uh, and they shout. So then the person on the other end says, sorry, can you say that again? 
or they think, oh, I'm not saying it loud enough, they can't hear, so they shout even louder. It's distorting everything. But uh, she has the most incredible laugh. Uh, it's, it's not a laugh, it's a real cackle, and it just creases me up every time. Um, I, I love listening to her. Ties laugh a lot. They, you know, they, if something hasn't got fun somewhere in it, the Ties call it Sanuk. If, the, if it doesn't have Sanuk, then they really can't be bothered with it. You know, there's got to be some fun in doing it. Uh, so Ties generally tend to laugh quite easily. And their sense of humour is, is very British. English? Maybe. Um, uh, so they laugh a lot, is what I'm saying, and her laugh just creases me up. I'll be sitting there, whatever, and I just burst out laughing when she does. It's great. Um, I, like I said, I don't know if you can actually pick her voice up. Right, back to work. Okay, we've got a nice... And I do like that, but it's just a little bit too busy, isn't it? And this big one sort of spoils it. And the thing is, with them being succulents, of course, they're, they're, they're quite floppy uh, because they don't get wood. <laughs> uh, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off that one to about, I nearly cut it all off, but then I saw that there's these, which could be quite useful growing, so with these as well. Now there's that one. Uh, we could do away with this if we needed to, um, to keep it, yeah, to keep things a little bit lower at the front. Uh, somewhere like that, I think. Oh, we'll get, way I'm chucking this stuff all over me. I get quite excited actually, because <laughs> when you see something sort of coming into shape and you think, oh, I wonder what it's going to look like in the end. You know, by the time I've got the rocks and all the nice pebbles on and trimmed it all, it's, um, it's great. On we go. Uh, right. Okay. We need to just fill in this, but not too much because it start it's getting a bit there's a lot of trees there, it's getting a bit full so let's shall we go for some of the smaller ones again um oh that one has got a root system no no don't need that All right, let's have a look. I don't know whether you can hear that. Uh, it's a frog. We've been getting a little bit of rain lately, although it's hot season. It's about 34, 35 degrees here at the moment. Um, it feels in the late 30s or early 40s Celsius, that is. Um, so when the rain comes, uh, it makes the frogs very happy and they explode. And we've got little ponds at the bottom of the stairs to go down to our front garden here. There's uh, six little ponds. So of course they have their fair share of uh, gop frogs, gop in Thai. Now then, there we go. That's a nice little grouping, isn't it? And it's gone up again. But we're still keeping this essentially triangular formation, which is the way trees develop. And it's why we've still got lots of work to do on the tops of these trees, because the tops are too heavy on these, and that wouldn't normally be the case. Now, okay, I can go there. You want that? Not quite. Yeah, just to hold it in place there for a minute. 
And I think a couple more. We need a tallish one, don't we? Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Oh, mm, normally I'd consider that a bit too high. But I don't know. What do you think? Too high? I mean, this, these would be perfect, wouldn't they? But I don't really want to cut this off just to get those two. It seems a shame because it's a nice grouping. Could we put it behind? Would it look okay then if I put that there? Oh, 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 yeah, that would do it visually. Oh, that looks quite nice. That looks quite nice. Right, so... And just something else as well. This is great for kids, you know, uh, not just as an introduction to bonsai, but, you know, to, to growing things and having one, buying a plant in a pot and giving it to a kid to look after, a kid, a younger person to look after. Um, it is great. But when you're involved in actually creating your own little scenario here, they're going to be a lot more invested in it. Um, and... They'll take care of it, hopefully, um, because they've created this this very thing that they can be proud of. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. It's easy with this. You're not going to risk losing lots of money. And, uh, you know, if bad things happen, well, you've learned something. So start again. Do another one. Uh, I have lost too many trees uh, over the years. <laughs> but... Mm -hmm. But such is life. Oh, there. Oh, look at this. Is filling out quite nicely, isn't it? But if I put that there, then it's going to have to be something bigger at the back. So really, if I want this to be the front, this will have to be at the back, and with something smaller at the front. Do we? Can we get him in there? Does he fit in? Hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get him down in place. See what it looks like. Oh, yes, I can go for that. I can go for that. Take a little bit more soil off the top. Yeah. Okay. And we need something smallish in the front, don't we? Now, that would be down to about there. How's that? How is that? And then we'll look for a little, little one on the end here, I think. Oh, oh look at that. How long has it taken? And the one I've just done on the bridge, I've done before, let's say I made that bridge pot four, five, five years ago, it's got to be. 50% um, of those are the original trees that went into that pot five years ago. Uh, I've replaced a couple of them because they've grown too straggly uh, or they've gone a bit weird or whatever. But um, they, they survived quite easily. Uh, they were in a kitchen window, I think, and they got uh, a little shower once a day, um, afternoon, evening. It's great. So that the hot sun doesn't evaporate the water as soon as you, or shortly after you, you put it in the medium. Um, so yeah, early evening, uh, and it's doing great, doing great. So yeah, very easy to look after. So great for youngsters. Um, that is, of course, assuming you can actually get these out where you guys are. That I don't know. I hope you can. If not, it, it lets you see that your garden centre has probably got um, starter trees, you know, for shrubs, uh, azaleas, um, particularly uh, cherry trees, um, all fruit trees, actually. You, know, you, you can just Google um, bonsai orange tree, whatever. Um, but if, if they're shrub-like, 
it gives you a lot more options of which branches to cut off and which you know, to leave or whatever. But uh, every now and again, you might come across a tree that you look at and you go, oh, that would make a nice bonsai. And nobody else knows. It's just in a group of 50 other shrubs. Um, I spend quite some time <laughs> walking around the big garden center, picking everyone up, and I'm going to look at the root of the trunks to see if you know it's fun keeps you out the bars and off the streets <laughs> now i'm just trying to figure out how to end this it's quite full at this end but by the time we've trimmed a lot of those uh, it won't be as full this i think needs something yeah about there so let's put them in there Well, that's a pretty, pretty full forest. Um, it's going to look completely different by the time it's all trimmed, though. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put more soil on uh, and level it off, or more medium on, level it off, just to make sure that these are all safe in their places. Um, and then I will be using a chopstick, the most important tool second most competitive yeah scissors i suppose chopsticks i'll explain that later so for now i'm just going to load up this with some more medium Right, it's got the medium, sort of fairly level, covering most of the roots. And now, probably one of the most crucial parts of either repotting or potting up uh, any plant, uh, particularly in a well-draining soil that's got lots of gravel or you know whatever uh, in it. It's not just garden soil. Um, and this next procedure uh, could, if not done properly, could lead to a lot of the problems that most people have uh, uh, with their trees, plants, after they've repotted them or planted them up in another pot or whatever. Um, there, there can be huge caverns and caves under the top, and we don't know. In between all the roots and things, there might be nothing. We don't know. We can't see. And although we need oxygen in there, so we don't want to compact the soil, we do want to make sure that the medium is everywhere it should be, uh, and particularly under the, the bases of, of trees like this. Well, any tree with a root system. And a chopstick is the most amazing tool for that. You prod, it, it's fairly, it's not a sharp point, but it's fairly pointed. So it slips easily in between roots without damaging them. Um, and the feel of the chopstick, you actually do feel it. Um, if, there's, if it gets into a cavern, it feels easy. You know that there's a big hole there. And so you keep on prodding along until uh, the, the gravel fills it up or the, the soil fills it up. And I leveled it all off because I want to show you just how much of a difference it can make 
uh, when you think everything is good like that, but uh, we need to give it a good poke. I'll fast forward this. <laughs> Oh, so you can see just how much the, the soil has gone down because we filled all the big caverns underneath. But because the, the, the whole medium is dry, uh, never repot with wet soil or, or wet medium, uh, it create or it can create too many problems. Um, it, you know that you're prodding about with uh, your fingers and, and the, um, the chopstick has got the medium everywhere it needs to be. Um, so now we'll top up again. And then I will start trimming these trees to hopefully make them look more like trees. Um, I'll put that on fast forward when I get to it too. I think it works on both sides too, doesn't it? Or I think it does. Looks fairly balanced. Okay, I'm going to get to work now trimming these down. Uh, so I'll put them on fast forward. <laughs> My bird shaped scissors. <laughs> right. You know, I'm actually cutting off half leaves. Uh, I haven't cut off a full leaf yet. Um, you pull them down, you see you can either grow out, cut out the main single leaf, uh, the growing tip, or you can cut back a little bit. Um, it just makes life easier. You're not getting rid of a whole leaf. You're literally just, whoops, sorry, baby, shaping it. And to be honest, this is where that sort of the meditation thing <laughs> that I was talking about before comes into it. Um, because normally I would just be now completely like into it and not talking. So I'll speed it up again. That off as well and the same on the other side and you're basically just thinning it out 
giving the leaves room to breathe might be another way to put it. So if you see a load of leaves sitting on top of each other, get rid of them or get rid of part of them to clear it all up. Uh, and so now you can see it on the top there, it's a, a lot smaller. We've still got one at the back here, which I need to trim. So there we are. Now, still maybe a little bit on this one. There we go. So we got a nice top now. Um, and again, trying to sort of, you know, keep that triangular thing going. I've uh, got a few more to trim on there. But uh, I'll come back, I'll finish this off, and then come back and show you what I do with the stones and things on the bottom. Uh, tarting it up, I think, is one way to put it. <laughs> 